Hello drummers and other entities. In this video, we're going to take a look at Jimi Hendrix's 1966 release, Hey Joe. It's a very famous song, I'm sure you know it. Drumming is provided by the magnificent Mitch Mitchell, and it sounds a little bit like this. Na ni no na no, na ni na ni na no. I'm not going to show you how to imitate note for note what Mitch Mitchell is doing in this recording. Uh, Mitch went into the studio and recorded what felt right to him with the vocabulary that he had, and, and why shouldn't we do the same? Um, so I'm going to sort of break this up into two main components. Uh, the song is made out of a four bar phrase that repeats over and over again from the beginning to the end. So I'm going to show you part one, what the sort of basic groove is that's played over that four bar phrase and then there's a little gap at the end where we're going to add our fills and I'm going to show you some ideas that will allow you to develop and uh, you know learn how to improvise some fills that fit in the, the little gap that remains there. Here's the four bar phrase and I'm, I'm going to leave empty space where the fills are going to go. It resolves to the end of four. That's that extra snare drum note there. So what's this made of? First things first, we're going to be playing eighth notes on the hi-hat or the ride. The, the first little bit of the song, Mitch is on the hi-hat, uh, and then he moves over to the ride, I think, for the, the duration, as best my poor ears can make out. We're just going to be playing eighth notes. Next, we're playing snare on the two and four in the first two bars, and we'll be playing the bass drum on the one, the and of two, the three, and the and of four, just for those first two bars, like this. In the third bar, things get a little bit more interesting. We're gonna have the bass on the one, the three, and the and of three, so we get this. And then the snare is going to play on the two, the art of two, the art of three, and the and of four. So the count would be one and two and a three and a four and one and two and a three and a four and. And that follows the dee dum dee dum dum bit in the uh, the bass riff and the, the, the guitar thingy. Um, I think that's the official term anyway. Uh, have a listen to this and I'll, I'll um, put a PDF up and uh, put the link in the description box and you can download and look at it with your eyes if you need to. Here we go, sounds like this. In the final bar, we're just gonna play the bass on the one and the snare on the two, and then we're gonna leave a gap for the fill. Go with me on this. Um, and then we're gonna accentuate, or we're gonna play a snare drum stroke anyway on the and of four. So the final bar of this is gonna be a 
and that's just sort of make us aware that there are a lot of the fills kind of resolve to the four and of that fourth bar of the four bar phrase, right? Lots of fours there. Um, so, and it doesn't happen exclusively all the time, uh, but there is a sense of resolution to that and a four. And um, when we look at the fill in more detail, hopefully that will be a little bit more clear. But I'm now going to play all four of those bars for you. Uh, maybe I'll cycle it a couple of times so that you can follow it and, and hopefully it makes sense. Once you get comfortable with that on the hi-hat, work on it on the ride. Um, I like to play with my left foot on the two and four. You can add that if you want to. It's not obligatory. It's perfectly fine if you don't do that. But this is how I do it on the ride. Once you've got the hang of that, once you know how to play that fluently and you've got it up to the tempo of the song and you feel nice and comfortable with it, you can try and add some skip notes to it. And skip notes are the little notes that give us that extra swingy feeling. So if I'm playing on the ride, we get this for the eights. And when I add skip notes, we get this. And what these are are just sixteenths that have a swung feel to them. So if we have our eighth notes like this, one and two and three and four, and a non-swung sixteenth or a straight sixteenth would be one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. But if I swing the sixteenths, that means that I move the position of the e's and r's a little bit closer to the the following uh, count. So it would be like this. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and we have a sixteenth note shuffle. So if I'm going to add a few sixteenths here and there, they would be with that swung feel. If I play all of the sixteenths, I'll get. But I'm just going to do the occasional ones just to add a little saucy spice. So here's uh, the four bar phrase with me adding a few swung sixteenths just for for a bit of extra oomph and uh, again they're called skip notes as far as I know. Again, you're totally free to play without adding the skip notes. It will still sound good. Uh, and then you can learn very slowly to add the occasional skip note here and there and develop the skill to do that. You can try to add the skip notes just by improvising your way into it. If you listen and feel it, just play the cymbal on its own. And see what you can make of it. Then, very gently, start maybe with just the, the pattern from the first two bars of this, with the bass on the one, the and of two, uh, the three, and the and of four, and practice adding some skip notes to it, like this. Uh, 
and, and so on and so on. Uh, and in due course, you'll be able to add them a little bit more freely to the four bar phrase. Uh, it's also quite helpful if you haven't done so uh, up till now to learn some at least basic swing coordination. Uh, you know, Mitch Mitchell and, and all those guys really from the olden days, the, the classic rock drummers, had at least some facility to play swing. And, uh, you know, they brought that into the rock music until that sort of got stamped to death in the 70s. The other thing you can do with this is change the bass drum pattern. Once you've learned how to imitate the thing that I've shown you, you can add or subtract bass drum notes according to your good taste and just see what happens with that. Again, Mitch Mitchell's not playing a very fixed pattern, so while the sort of skeleton of the thing is there, there's a lot of improvising uh, going on just according to the, the changes that he feels in the groove. Let's move on to the fill. Um, we left a two beat gap at the end of our four bar phrase, so the three and four, or the third and fourth beats of the fourth bar of our phrase, we've left uh, except for the and a four that we're going to try and resolve to. Uh, most of the fills in Hey Joe are half a bar, some of the fills are a bar long, so we'll look at both of those options, but we're gonna start off focusing on half a bar, on two beats worth. There are um, a few subdivisions that are, are played here uh, that we need to know about. So we're gonna think about 16ths, we're gonna think about 16th note triplets, and we're gonna think about 32nd notes as the main kind of components of our fill. Uh, despite having said that the, um, the, the ride pattern, when we add the 16ths to that, they're swung. If we play a fill in 16ths, we're not gonna swing it. We're gonna play, play it with a straight fill. Uh, and then the 30 seconds also are going to be played within a straight feel, and then we've got the 16th note triplets, which are obviously triplets, so they, they'll sort of come out sounding swung, depending on how you play them. Let's first think about how we count that bar with the fill. Uh, the first thing with the 16th, we would just count 1 and 2 and 3 e ana, 4 e ana. Again, not swung 16th. If they were swung, it would be 3 e ana, 4 e ana. But for the fills, we're going to be singing straight 16th. One and two and three e ana four e ana one, two and three e ana four e ana, and for example, the fill that opens the song is a sixteenth note fill. Next, we're going to sing sixteenth uh, note triplets, so groups of three. And uh, I don't know how to count these in an easy way using numbers, but I will count them using the syllables takita, right? So we've got takita, 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 all together. Uh, 12 notes, right? So we're counting three groups of three. Takita, 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 takita. Putting that in with our bar, it goes one and two and takita, 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 takita. One and two and takita, 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 takita. Uh, you can use any three syllables that you like. Uh, bumblebee, one and two and bumblebee, 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 bumblebee. That's a bit of a mouthful, so takita works well enough. Uh, and then finally, the 30 seconds are takadimi, and you're going to have four groups of four sounds. So it'd be one and two and takadimi, 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 takadimi. One and two and takadimi, 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 takadimi. Now, for some of you, playing those 30 second notes might be a doddle, and you can enjoy yourself and have fun with it. For others, it might be a bit of a, uh, a tall order to play that many notes, and you can leave out the 30 seconds and you're still absolutely fine. You'll be able to play and create interesting uh, fills with just the 16th and the 16th note triplets. To start off with, let's play the 16th note fill, and we'll just do it one bar at a time. So I'm gonna play the first half of the bar with the fill, like this. And so on and so on. I've made myself comfortable with my 16th notes and next I can introduce some gaps. I'm going to keep the 16th feel going but I'm not going to play every single 16th that I can, like so. Now, I hear you ask, what about the resolution to the forehand? Um, there is that kind of sense of completion 
on the under four of that fo fourth bar. So once you feel like you can play your 16th comf comfortably, let's um, do that resolution. So resolving to the forearm would be like this. it basically you get to the forehand and you stop and uh, you can just think do 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 da that's that and you don't have to uh, religiously resolve to the forehand uh, it's, it's a kind of structural thing there that maybe you, sometimes you just feel it in your gut that you play what you play okay next the 16th note triplet so again it's takita 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 and I'm going to do that as a single bar Let's resolve it to the forehand with the triplets. Next, we'll leave some gaps in our triplets. Again, with each of these stages, if this is new to you at all, spend your time as long as it takes till you get comfortable with it and you can start to improvise a bit more freely. Don't try and do anything too far beyond your capability. Um, so if the 16th works for you, work on that. If the triplets are good, work on that. Once you've got the hang of the uh, 16th and the triplets, you can mix them up a bit. That. It sounds kind of cool once you can do it. Finally, the 32s. Takadimi, 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 takadimi. Now let's resolve it to the and of four. Finally, we'll put some gaps in it. Whatever, just throw your hands around. <laughs> um, that's it. So now let's see, um, let's try and put it all together in our four bar phrase and I'll use each one of those subdivisions in turn. Uh, again, you know, there's, there's a bit of work here to do if you're not familiar with any of this and there's all sorts of extra stuff. You can use different stickings, you can add double strokes, you can add rolls to the thing, you can paradiddleize. Uh, this works quite nicely. Uh, you can improvise acts and patterns and so on. I'm just showing you the kind of basic stuff to get you going with this. So, the four bar phrase, I'm going to play um, just with a 16th note fill. I'm going to play with a 16th triplet fill. And I'm going to play with 30 seconds fill. Let's see what we get. Ride.
there you have it. That's a little bit of an introduction to how you would go about learning how to play Hey Joe and developing your, your own voice or your own language uh, using subdivisions, understand the basic structure of rhythm and how we combine uh, different groove patterns with different subdivisions uh, to create stuff that we can improvise with. Mm -hmm. that, again, that's all Mitch Mitchell did, right? He had his vocabulary, as I said, and he just let it out when he got into the studio or when he got on stage and played with his bandmates. I hope that makes sense. I hope you found something in this that you can take away and work on. Uh, if you did or if you didn't, please feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought of this, as well as let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to cover in the future. I'm always interested to hear what the people who watch my videos uh, want to learn about. Um, if you do want to get a bit of a deeper look into your own drumming journey, feel free to get in touch with me. I offer lessons one-on-one -on -one via Skype or Zoom or whatever uh, platform you like. Uh, my contact details will be in the description below. Uh, meanwhile, I think it's time for you to get off and practice.